What's the story in Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Life After Lockup Season 5, Episode 22, Fighting Chance. So we have made it to the very end. This is the season finale episode, and I'm so, so happy. And on top of all of that, it was a pretty decent episode. So let's get started with Chance and Taylor. So when we see uh, Chance and Taylor, Taylor is at home, and she is putting away all the stuff that reminds her of Chance. The pictures that they took, all the cute little mementos, she's putting them all away in a box now she's not throwing them away she's just going to put them away for now in case her son might want to see them when he's older so chance he's somewhere off on the railroad tracks pontificating about his relationship with chance and you know how could he have messed this up and how much he's going to miss her and the girls but he is still going to try to get her back so later on we see them they meet up to talk and um Chance is making all of these promises, how he's going to do better, he's going to change. And Chance, um, and Taylor tells him that even if you do change, even if you do become better, the one thing that can never change is how you made me feel. So he admits to cheating on her. He finally comes clean somewhat. Um, and he does admit that he did cheat on her. And um, he says that everybody was telling him that Taylor was cheating on him. So he was cheating on her out of revenge or um, out of holding a grudge against her because he thought that she was cheating on him, which we all know that Chance does not believe that. He does not believe for a second that Taylor was cheating on him. He's only saying that to justify his own actions so that he doesn't come off looking like the bad guy. But we know that he himself doesn't even believe that Taylor cheated on him. So he tells her that he cheated on her with this one random chick at a bar and then Taylor tells him that she never ever cheated on him that she was always faithful to him he brings up about some male friend of hers that she was communicating with through email and she was like it was just talking through email we weren't having sex through the email it was just us communicating through email and nothing ever came of it she said that he made her feel like there was something wrong with her for not trusting him. In other words, you know, he kept on gaslighting her um, for her believing her woman's intuition because that woman's intuition, y'all, most of the time it is not going to fail you. If you have any suspicions that something is going on, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, you are absolutely right. It's just up to you whether or not you want to believe your intuition. So um, she asked him how many people did he cheat with and he told her five. And this reminds me of whenever somebody gets stop for drunk driving and the police will ask him how many beers have you had or how much have you had to drink and everybody always says two beers um, and we all know that's a lie so for him to say he only cheated on her with five people we all know that's a, a load of crap um, I'm going to guesstimate that it's probably closer to 15 to 20 people that he cheated on her with um, and I think I'm being very conservative and out of the people that he cheated on her with she asked him have any of them have, have any of them been men and he does admit that he did uh, mess around with his male friend who is gay he said that he was drunk one night he was I think him and Taylor were, were having a fight or something so he got upset he left and he went over to his um, friend's house and one thing led to another but he says he didn't get off on it I don't believe that either I think I don't know if it, him and Taylor were having a fight that particular day or that particular night but he went there with the intent uh, in my opinion he went there with the intent of messing around with his male friend um, I don't think that things just happened and you know he didn't get off on it um I think that he was curious I think maybe the friend was offering um to you know hook up with him or something and I think um Chance took him up on that offer that's what I think happened so after all of that you know he is still begging to get back with her even in their own confessional because they have a confessional together even in their confessional he gets down on his knees and he's begging her to come back to him making all these promises so at their meeting he ends up walking away from her because Taylor is standing her ground she is not going to cave in she's not going to give in to him she is not going to go back to him so she is standing her ground and so he gets upset and he walks away from her and he tells her you know just don't bring any man around my kid or what or what chance what if she brings 15 men around your kid and or what what are you going to do about it you're going to take her to court to fight for custody because you think that with your unemployed wayward self that um the courts are going to give you custody of your son <laughs> like what are you talking about so it looks like you know taylor and chance um are definitively over i'm hoping and praying that that's true i think what did it for taylor was him admitting that he cheated and also probably him admitting that he cheated on her with a man I think that's what did it for her um 
I, people are telling me that they are really broken up in real life. They are still broken up. Um, the little update notes that they put at the end of the show, it says that Taylor and Chance are still not together, but Chance was arrested again for motor vehicle tampering, but he was released on bail. So as far as I know, it is truly over between Taylor and Chance. And I am just so proud of her uh, for finally breaking ties with this man because he was absolutely up to no good. Um, he was never going to change. I've always said that no matter how many promises he made he was not going to change and if she would have stayed with him it just would have been the same thing over and over again um Taylor tells us that the best thing that the two positive things that have come out of this relationship with Chance is number one her son Mason and number two um what was it it was was it she said it was her knowing that her her intuition was right and her believing her intuition I guess so yeah good for them for finally breaking up I'm just really proud of her that she ended it. Moving on to Red and Joy Nami. Y'all, somebody put in my comments that Joy Nami is known as Joy No No. <laughs> And I lost it. So Red has just confessed to Joy about having sex with another female when they were back in Missouri, um, when they were staying at the hotel together right after he came out of prison. So he finally confesses to her that he hooked up with another female. And, you know, Joy starts crying and all this and that. And Red says that he was really irritated that day because I think they got into a fight or something. So he says he was, he was really irritated that day and that he was really in his feelings and he didn't want to do do it he didn't want to cheat but he ended up doing it anyway and so he says that he doesn't even really want the other girl which is his friend Julie that he's referring to we saw her on the show and that the girl um, ended up cutting him off and I'm thinking to myself, well, that's the real reason why you're with Joy. It's because that other girl cut you off. If that girl still held the, do held the door open for Red, I don't think he would have ever moved to New Mexico with Joy. He probably still would have been with the other girl. So because of the fact that she cut him off for whatever reason, this is why, you know, he quit messing with her and he ended up staying with uh, Joy or going to New Mexico with Joy. So Red says that um, because Joy had asked him if he did this out of revenge because she cheated on him and had a baby um, on him with somebody else while he was in prison. And he tells her, no, it wasn't out of revenge. I don't think it's out of revenge. I think whether or not Joy has so-called cheated, because if you're with somebody in prison, I don't consider it cheating because you're not in a real relationship to begin with. But that's all another thing. So um, I don't think that he did this because she cheated on him and had a baby on him. I think he did this because it is just in his DNA to do this. Um, you know, Red to me comes off as a serious F boy. So whether she had cheated on him or not, had a baby on him or not, she could have been the most faithful girlfriend, prison girlfriend ever. He still would have done this. It's just in his blood to do it. It's just in him to do it. And plus, he really doesn't love Joy. And he's for the streets. So it would have happened anyway. And I wish Joy would understand that. Because then maybe she wouldn't carry this guilt that she has something to do with him cheating. So he, she then she asks him, I don't know why people ask this question. Because you're not going to get the real answer. So then she asked him, well, was she better than me in bed? And Red was like, no, no. Okay, if Joy is that good, Red, if she is that good in bed, then why are you with other people? Why were you with somebody else on around the time that you were just released from prison, knowing what Joy has done for you, how she held you down while you were in prison? If she was such a good woman and, you know, um, she just got it like that and, you know, she's the best of the best of the best in bed. So why were you with another girl? I mean, if you're driving a Ferrari or a, a Bentley or a Jag or whatever, a Mercedes, why, then why would you, you know, even consider getting into a Honda or a Hyundai or a, a whatever? If I don't understand, understand that if you have the best of the best then why were you going for second best or third best or fifth best if the other girl was such trash in bed like I don't understand that and Joy if it doesn't make sense it's not true so I hope you're not falling for his lies so what else is going on here um Joy asked if if he was with other women when he went on his trip to Missouri to visit his family, he says, no, uh, I don't believe that. He promised to not do it again. So he starts making her all of these promises, how he's changed now. He's a better man. He wants another chance. And, you know, he loves her, et cetera, et cetera. And Joy is not listening to it. She's not having it. She tells him, get your stuff and you're going to have to sleep in a hotel tonight because you're not staying here. So we see him with this one lonely, sad, pathetic suitcase um, walking over the rocks um, on her front 
in her front yard and going to catch an Uber or something. So Red says that he feels really bad um, about all that's happened between him and Joy because he feels like he's losing his family. He feels like he's losing his son, Sway. Sway don't give a damn. <laughs> so I don't give a damn. He was the first one to sign the petition of get red the hell out of New Mexico. He don't give a damn about you. Um, <laughs> like you, y'all just met. He doesn't even know who the hell you are. You're just the weird looking guy with the pants hanging off his butt. And, um, you know, the long, the long braids in his hair. That's how he knows. He doesn't see you as uh, red stop. He doesn't know you. He don't care about you. He, he don't. He don't give a damn. Moving on from there, Joy's sisters they come over. I don't know how much time has passed by, but um, Joy's sisters come over, and she's explaining to her sisters that um, Red has moved out. He went back to Missouri, and that is completely over between them. She's packing up his stuff, <laughs> the bonnet that he left behind. She's packing up all of his stuff, and she's shipping it to Missouri because it is really and finally over. Then Joy tells us. She asked her son, Sway, if it's okay, is it okay, Sway, if it's just you and mom, if it's just you and mommy again, uh, without red. And she says that Sway was happy. Girl, you didn't have to tell us that. We know, we know that little boy was happy that that man was out of his damn house, drinking up his juices, eating up his snacks, playing video games all day where he can't even watch his cartoons. We know that that little boy was happy when red finally left moving on. So Red is back in Missouri. We see him trying to get a job. He calls a potential employer to ask if they got his application. And they're like, uh, yeah, it's going to be a hard pass for us because of your background. So he is still unemployed. Then some girl calls him wanting to hook up or link up. And he's like, I'm on my way. So he's already moved on. He don't he don't give a damn about Joy, Sway, New Mexico, none of that. He has moved on. All I want to know is Joy, did you also send him back that $35 ring? Did you put that in the box too? So, um, the little update notes at the end of the, uh, of their segment or the end of the episode tells us that joy hasn't spoken to red in two months. She is still single. Um, and that red has not found a job surprise, surprise, and that he is uh, dating someone, but it's not serious. Yeah. We all knew that we didn't need the update. We all knew that. <laughs> and, uh, by the way, joy also told us that she will never date another inmate again, but she is looking forward to her next relationship. And I'm just like, girl, slow the hell down, please slow down and stop bringing men around your son. Okay, stop bringing men around your son until you know that it's absolutely 100% serious. They put that real diamond ring on your finger. Um, don't bring these men around your son. Moving on from there, let's talk about Louie and Melissa and the nose. So Melissa and Louie, they're at the beach because um, this is the day that she's going to be taking her bandages off. So she took her bandage bandages off, but she didn't want Louie to be at the doctor's office with her when she did that. She wanted, I guess, like I said before, she wanted to see her nose without Louie being there. And in my personal opinion, whether it was good or bad, she wanted to get used to it before she hears, you know, Louie lie about how great it looked. So um, he is at the beach. He's got this romantic picnic um, set up for the big nose reveal. So after she leaves the doctor's office, she's on her way to the beach and she has her nose covered up with a scarf, right? So she gets to where Louis at and he can't wait to see the nose. And so she does the big reveal. And of course he lies and exaggerates on how good the nose looks. Y'all, let me tell you something. Her nose before was a lot better. It fit her face so much better. I don't know why she went tinkering around with that damn nose. Her nose um, post-surgery to me, it looked even bigger. It looked more bulb, bulb, bulbous, bigger, um, like it's too big for her little face. I, I don't understand why she did this. So he's going on and on. Oh my God, it looks great. It looks so good. It really fits your face. I love it. So then he touches it and he's asking her, why is this so hard? And she says, it's all the scar tissue that is built up from the surgery. Okay, fine. Melissa initially says that she doesn't like it because it was still healing. And I'm like, girl, it, it, what you see is what you get. It's not going to change. It's not going to turn into a cute little button Cinderella nose. What you see is what you get because... Later on, the nose still looked the damn same. Um, it still looked like it was way too big. It looked more rounded and just her nose before was just fine. 
it fit her face. There's a reason why. Anyways, moving on. So um, they're sitting on the beach. They're talking. And as you know, they're talking about their relationship. And she's telling him, oh, I really appreciate you, Louie, for being there for me throughout my surgery and putting up with all my craziness. And they're going on and on about their future, how much they love each other, and how they're going to stick it through until the very end. Just a lot of positive stuff about their future. Um, as she's talking, Louie cannot stop looking at her nose. And I, I couldn't stop looking either. Now, before I never noticed her nose, I never noticed it. I was more captivated by her eyes. I always thought that Melissa had the prettiest eyes. So I was always drawn to her eyes. Now that she's got this brand new nose, I can't stop looking at, I cannot stop looking at that nose. So, um, it's, it's just a lot more noticeable. So Louis gives, so he's digging around cause he have, he's, he has a surprise for her. So as we're talking about their future, he tells her, you know, I've got something for you. So he starts digging around behind her, you know, of course they want us to think that he's probably going to present her with an engagement ring, but instead it was a message in a bottle. And so she takes the note out of the bottle and she reads it. And it's some, you know, it's beautiful. I don't remember what the hell he said, but it was some beautiful loving note about how much he loves her, how much he wants to be with her. And there's nobody else in the world for him, but her fine. So, um, he tells her that he wants her to be patient while he works on getting her, you know, the ring of her dreams, because Melissa is kind of high maintenance. So she's not going to put up with just any kind of ring she will not put on a $35 ring that is sold in a bar that is one thing that Melissa will not do so um Lou is like just be patient with me and I promise I will get you the ring that you want they talk about getting married and she says well now I'm gonna have to get my boobs done now she wants fake boobs she says you know I can't walk down the aisle you know in a wedding dress without boobs so that's gonna be her next project and I'm like okay and so it begins she's gonna be tinkering with herself uh, rearranging herself to the point where she's gonna be completely unrecognizable but hey it's her life her body her money so he tells her you know I like you the way you are and you know it really well I've noticed like when Louie tries to tell her to not change like when he was trying to tell her don't get your nose done and like as he's trying to tell her to not go with not do any more surgery you can tell that he's kind of like scared to tell her that she looks fine the way she is because she's going to get aggressive with it so he's like you know but I like you just the way you are she's not listening she wants to get her boobs done so um the little update that we find out about them at the end of their uh, at the end of the episode it says that you know her nose is still healing her nose is what it is. Okay. What we saw is what it is. There's, it's not going to shrink. Like I said, it's not going to turn into a cute little princess nose. What it is, what we saw is what it is. So, um, now she loves her new look and Louie is working at a, say it y'all pizzeria and he's trying to save enough money to buy her the perfect engagement ring so they are still together I'm happy for them um I think they're kind of cute together um if she is really going to soften up a little bit and not be so demanding and so aggressive with him um I have no problem with Louie and Melissa being together so good for them I just need her to be more supportive and more encouraging in a, in a much gentler way and not be so hard on him but I do think that Louie does have the motivation but I think that whenever he has an idea to do something and she knocks it down it kind of throws him off and so he goes back to what's comfortable moving on to Michael and Justine so while Justine is fake sleeping in her house because remember last week uh, Michael's mom she just had Melissa I mean excuse me Justine just had the baby they're back at home and uh while Justine was resting in the house Mike's mom was talking to Mike about the DNA test so he she brought the DNA test and she wants to test the baby and so they're like creating all of this suspension about how is she going to test the baby while Justine's asleep even though Mike told her don't do it and if Justine finds out she's going to have your head on a platter but it looks like the mother was still trying to do it I knew the mom wasn't going to test that baby it just wasn't going to happen number one Justine was fake sleeping <laughs> She wasn't even really sleeping because you could see her eyelids fluttering. So while she's fake sleeping, you know, Mike's mom is creeping around the house, making us think that she's looking for the baby to test the baby. But instead, she just creeps right onto the trash can and throws a DNA test away. She tells us that she's not going to test the baby because now she believes that the baby is Mike's and um, she loves Christine and she not Christine. She loves Justine and she thinks that Justine and Mike are really good together and that she's never seen her son so in love like this. And so she doesn't want to break up a happy home by testing the baby behind the mother's back. Now, I will say this, Justine and Mike, yeah, they are really into each other. Um, 
I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if anything, if anything scandalous happened, like if he cheated or she cheated, I'm not going to be surprised, but for where we're are, where we're at right now with them, they are in love with each other. Uh, I feel like this is a real relationship. I think that it's really genuine. These two people are really, 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 really into each other. So uh, the mom doesn't do the DNA test, but later on, um, we see Mike and Justine together and Mike asks, uh, Justine, Hey, you know, I talked to my daughter, Melody, and she wants to know, you know, if she can move to Las Vegas with us, because initially Mike made it seem like Justine would not be down with that. But Justine was totally cool. She was totally okay with it. She was like, that would be so great. There's nothing that I would want more than, you know, having your daughter come live with us in Las Vegas. And so uh, Mike tries to kind of like, after she already said that she was cool with it, he tries to like, 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 I don't know if he heard her or not, because then he says, you know, she'll be a really good, she'll, she'll uh, be helping us out. You know, she'll be a really good help for us. And Justine was like, I don't want her to come to Las Vegas to help us, you know, with the baby and the other kids. I want her to come to Las Vegas to live, you know, her best teenage life. I don't want her there to help us. Um, she tells him she's done enough of raising your children while you've been in prison. So no, I'm not expecting her to do anything like that. I want her just to be a damn teenager and live her life in Las Vegas. So she's cool with Melody uh, moving in with them. And then Mike was like, what about my mom? She also wants to come and she wants to help us out. And Justine was like, I don't know about her living with us. She can stay temporarily, but I don't know about her like living with us permanently, which doesn't make any sense why she would even do that. So Justine was understanding though, because she did say, I know that, you know, you've been gone for so long and your mom wants to spend time with you. So I get it. So she can definitely come so she can try to spend time with you and help out. Out, but I don't think Justine is seeing her mother-in-law living with them long, long term. So Justine was totally cool with it. And I absolutely loved it. So Mike and Justine, they're in love. They love each other. I have no issues with them at all. Um, I'm fine with Mike and Justine because they're so wrapped up in each other. So it's fine. And the fact that Justine is allowed his son to move in with them. Now she's allowing his daughter to move in with them. And I'm pretty sure in no time at all, um, the youngest, uh, the, the two young little ones are probably end up going over there too, you know, depending on how their moms feel, but maybe they're too young to move. I don't know. So the little update on them is that Mike is considering a vasectomy and Justine is a hundred percent approving this. Look, don't consider the vasectomy. Go do it, Mike. Let me make that appointment for you. Go do it. There's nothing to consider. There's nothing to consider. Go ahead and take care of that vasectomy. Moving on to Chevelle and Quaylen. So um, they are at the park, Chevelle, Quaylen, and Maela. They're at the park because Chevelle is supposed to be meeting up with Sonia, who is Maela's paternal grandmother, the mother of Maela's father. So Sonia shows up. She meets Quaylen for the very first time. And Maela is really happy to see her grandmother. She runs up to her grandmother, gives her a big old hug. So when... Um, the grandmother tells us that she doesn't get to see her granddaughter that much because every time, you know, she tries to call, I guess, Chevelle to make arrangements to see her granddaughter. She says her calls go unanswered. Messages are not returned. So she makes it seem like, you know, Chevelle is keeping her from her granddaughter. So Sonia and Chevelle get a chance to talk just the two of them. And Sonia starts off by telling Chevelle that she is worried about Myela's well-being. And Chevelle tells um, the grandmother that, you know, Myela, is fine because Quaylen's got her. Quaylen is there for her. He's taking care of her. He's doing a good job as a father figure for Myela. So she's doing just fine. So then um, the grandmother tells her that Myela's father really loves his daughter and wants to be a part of his daughter's life. And Chevelle is like, I can't tell because he doesn't come around. He doesn't call. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't reach out to see how she's doing. We don't hear from him at all. So then they started arguing about that. And when they were arguing about whether or not the biological father is involved with Myela, I was leaning more towards believing Chevelle because the mother, the grandmother really wasn't saying she wasn't presenting a convincing argument that her son is trying his hardest to be a part of his daughter's life. She wasn't talking about, but you know, he came by or he did this and he did that. He tries to call her or he's always coming down here to try to see her. It was none of that. It was just, he loves her. He loves her. Okay. But love without being present doesn't mean anything. If he's loving her from a distance and never sees her, that doesn't mean anything at all. 
So they're arguing about that. So Chevelle tells her that she's considering having Quaylen adopt Myela. And baby, when she said that, the grandmother banged down on that table and she was like, nope, absolutely not. That is not going to happen. And then I'm thinking to myself, but Chevelle, why would you tell the grandmother that y'all are considering this adoption after your daughter clearly told you that she did not want to be adopted by Quaylen? So how is that going to work? So the grandmother says, you know, over my dead body, um, you're trying to just remove her father from her life. And Chevelle says, well, he's not even in her life. So how am I trying to remove someone who's not even there to be removed? So the grandmother says that, you know, the only reason why Quaylen is, you know, like father of the year in your eyes is because he's with you. He's a good father to uh, my Ela. He's, you know, he's present for my Ela because he's with you. If y'all were to break up, Myla probably won't ever see Quaylen again. And Chevelle was like, no, Sh Quaylen has been a part of her life through good and bad, through thick and thin. I guess even when they have broken up, I guess Quaylen was still, you know, trying to reach out to Myla and try to still be present for the little girl. So then Sonia wants to talk to Quaylen um, one on one. So she's asking Quaylen, well, how is it going to work out, you know, with you and my son raising Myla? And Quaylen was like, what you mean, me and your son raising Myla? He's like, I've tried to reach out to him. Um, I get no response. He's not participating in anything. So then Sonia says that she's got grandparents, right? Where? 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 In most states, there are no grandparents, right? So I don't know if in their particular states, if they did a, ref uh, a reform on the laws. But as far as I know, in a lot of states, there are no grandparents' rights. Um, so I don't know what the hell she was talking about. You know, this is, I, I don't even know what the hell she's talking about. And y'all, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but when Chevelle and Quaylen went to go see the attorney, Oh, he does have rights. Yeah, the father does have legal rights. Yeah, because he has a child support order. So he's already been adjudicated as the legal father. So um, the father has rights. So the grandmother, for her to talk about, well, I've got grandparents' rights, it made me think that the reason why she's saying that is because she knows her son is not going to try to enforce his rights. He doesn't want his rights taken away for Quaylen to adopt the child, but he's not going to enforce his rights because what she should have said was, no, there's not going to be any damn adoption or um, Quaylen, you need to move over because the father is going to fight for visitation or the father's going to fight for custody. The grandmother said nothing like that. She's talking about her rights because she's the one that's really fighting to see the child. And by the way, um, when they were talking about whenever Myla goes to visit her father, Chevelle said, he's not even around because the Myla's with you the whole entire time. And the grandmother was like, she's with us. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like he might stop by for five minutes to come see his daughter and then he he leaves I, the grandmother did not put up a good argument at all for her son and I totally believe Chevelle that this man is not a part of this child's life like the way the grandmother wants to make it seem like moving on from there let's talk about we talk about the nose let's go into Brittany and Key Rock so they're in the bedroom and what are they doing y'all they're arguing again they're arguing about moving to new york so Brittany had brought up the possibility of them moving to new york because her grandmother has suggested that they should move to new york so that she can be closer to Brittany and that you know um k-rock won't have a problem finding a job up there so she brings this up to k-rock and she's like what do you think about us moving to new york so i can be closer to uh, my mom and i can be around my family so on and so forth and k-rock was like mm, yeah i don't think so mm, i'm happy here because i'm closer to my mom and i'm closer to my family and I've been gone for six years and my mom needs me and I want to be around my family and so Brittany was like me too I've been gone from my family as well and I want to be around my mom I mean I want to be around my grandmother and my grandmother doesn't she's not in the best health I want to be there to take care of her and so they're arguing going back and forth and you know K-Rock's whole argument is I've been gone I need to be around my family and she's like everything you're saying of why we need to stay in Virginia is the same exact reasons why I want to move to New York we're in the same exact situation we were both incarcerated for years we both want to be around our family. We both have ailing um, relatives. Your mom is sick. My grandmother is sick. What are you talking about? 
So then she says, well, it's not like I want to move right now at some point in the future, but not right now. And so then Carol says, well, okay, when that time comes, we'll talk about it then. There's no need for us to argue about it now if you're not trying to move right now. So then she calls her grandmother and she tells her grandmother, uh, I talked about it with K-Rock and K-Rock said that, you know, he'll consider us moving to New York sometime in the future. So the grandmother's like, okay, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I don't know what, yeah, that's okay. So... Brittany's whole point is that all the reasons that K-Rock has for being near his family, those reasons apply to her as well. But once again, she gives in to K-Rock because just like when they were arguing about the baby and she wanted to start the whole baby thing right now and he was telling her no. And then she was like, okay, we'll do it later. Whenever you're ready, you know, we'll do it, you know, sometime in the future. So she gives in to him quite easily. So then K-Rock and Brittany, they go and they get baptized. Okay, so they go to church, they have the service, then everybody meets up at the beach, and um, the pastor begins the, the baptizing process. So K-Rock goes f first, dips him in the, uh, the, the pastor dips K-Rock into the water, and he was like, no, dip me again, dunk me again, and he got dunked three times, y'all, because he was trying to wash all all of those sins away so then when it came time for Brittany because you know Brittany she's really concerned about you know how she looks because she always has her perfect bun and her perfect little curly cues on her edges and so I was like man you know when she gets dunked all that's going to get messed up I don't know what kind of hairspray or hair gel she uses but when she got dunked under that water her hair came out perfect her bun did not move her curly cues were still in place so they're happy they've been baptized and you know Brittany talks about the difference between being Catholic and being Christian and she prefers being Christian she likes the Christian church better because she can really feel the spirit of the Lord when she's in a Christian church um, as opposed to a Catholic church so the little update is is that Brittany hopes that her parents come around to meeting K-Rock and they plan to get married in 2020 for good for them that is another couple that i have absolutely no issues with i'm pretty sure that their love is pretty solid they just have to um not argue so much moving on to blaine and Lindsay. so when we see blaine and Lindsay, they're arguing uh because you know Lindsay confronted Blaine about how Blaine was going to her daughter to talk about their problems with her daughter and trying to like uh, say all these negative things about Lindsay to her own child. So she confronted him about that. Obviously, he didn't deny it. He was even going to apologize for it. But that's when Lindsay told him, don't even bother because my daughter don't even like you. So they're arguing about that. And then he brings up the fact or he brings up the this issue about her cheating on him with a married man. And he was like, the reason why why we're having all these problems because you ran off with a married man and so in her confessional the producers ask her what the hell is he talking about and she's like i don't know <laughs> yes Brit uh, Lindsay, plead the fifth <laughs> unless she got some concrete evidence it didn't happen i don't know what he's talking about i don't know so in his confessional blaine is calling her everything but a child of god he called her a liar a manipulator a cheater a scammer <laughs> And he says he is done with Lindsay. So it seems like they actually did break up. I haven't heard anything um, like to confirm this, like if they're still broken up, but it seems like it's, it might be over between them. I have no idea. Now in their little update, it says that Lindsay's charges are still pending. She and Blaine have not spoken since he moved out. Miley and Lindsay are living together and are working on their relationship relationship blame moved in with a friend with his son so it seems like they're still broken up which is kind of sad until we found out that blaine was talking to Lindsay's daughter and trying to brainwash her daughter against her i was really rooting for Lindsay and blaine but it's just not gonna happen Moving on to the honorable mentions. So we did not see Eris and Cameron in this episode, but their little update is that they did get a new house together. I'm glad they said house and not trailer. They did get a new house together. Their daughter, Charlie was born and I don't have a lot of faith in Eris and Cameron. I think that a lot of issues. I think Eris, um, wants something very traditional. She wants a husband who works, you know, nine to five, clocks in, clocks out. It's got good benefits. And Cameron's trying to live the life of a rap star. He's trying to catch that dream of being this, you know, big time rapper. So I don't think they're on the same page at all because I don't see Cameron settling down to live this, you know, traditional lifestyle. I think he's always going to be chasing the excitement and the money and um, the glitz and the glamour of 
that lifestyle. So Sean and Sarah, their update is they're slowly slowly repaying their debt um they've knocked down that dilapidated burnt out house and they're started building their new home and it should be completed by 2025 uh sean and sarah i don't have a lot of faith in them either i really don't they argue quite a bit and sean he's a sneaky little weasel he's too sneaky he's got a lot going on behind sarah's back um he's dishonest mm -mm, i i just don't I don't care for the Sean and Sarah relationship. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a good one at all. And I don't have a lot of faith in that relationship happening. I'm waiting to see Sean back on love during lockup or love after lockup, uh, trying to, with another inmate. That's what I'm waiting to see. And I think we're done. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for joining me for every single episode that I reviewed um, of Life After Lockup. I appreciate all of your comments. I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate all of the thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever was uh, floating your boat at the time when you saw my video. It's all good. Um, just thank you so much. And hopefully, you know, we'll do it all again when love during lockup comes back. Uh, comes back in April. Thank you so much. On your way out, please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, subscribe to my channel and I'll definitely talk to you later.